our presentation shows the result of an archaeological survey of the decorated tools of the Pasema Plateau in southern Sumatora and discuss whether their appearance was the result of diffusion from another regions or independent development. This survey was conducted in 2019 by the Indonesian Archaeological Research Center in collaboration with Tokyo National Museum, Niigata University of International and Information Studies, and Kyushu University in Japan. This presentation is divided into four chapters. Chapter one is the center of the joint research of the burial of Tumuri. Chapter two is archaeological background to the appearance of decorated tombs and their significance. Chapter three is decorated Tumuri in Indonesia from the global viewpoint. And ch chapter four is the conclusion. Chapter one and three will be presented by Kawano and chapter two by Dr. Toriuru Jani. Indonesia consists of more than 10,000 islands, and the largest island is Sumatora. The Pasema Plateau in the southern part of uh, this, uh, this island has many rivers, and its uh, society is based on farming. Even today, megalithic monuments can be seen scattered among the paddy field. During the prehistoric period, dolmens Mayhew, stone chamber, tombs, and stone figures and animals. Rock carvings were constructed along with decorated tombs. These prehistoric artifacts belong to the early metal age, that is, Bronze Age, and are particularly unique in Indonesia. In 1931, the Dutch archaeologist Van der conducted a general survey of this area and published megalithic monuments of South Sumatora and reported for the first time the existence of decorated tools. Since then, the Center for Indonesian Archaeological Research has been accumulating archaeological researches. And now, 11 burial tumuli in the area have been confirmed to be decorated. Most of them have been painted. Um, uh, uh, five carvings are rare. Kotalaya Lembak Tumuri, that is Biruk Batu complex with a yellow cell on this table, was the target of our research. Four decorated tombs for which uh, we conducted photogrammetric surveys are uh, relatively well preserved in this region. But even so, the mural couldn't be identified with the naked eye alone. Here are some decorated tombs other than Lembak Tumuri. The photo on the left is Tanjong Aro tombs. Here, two stone chambers are built side by side. Tegurwangi tomb has a concentric circle pattern. In this tomb, circle pattern is depicted with the center, center and outline painted by white pigment and between them filled with lead. Taran Pakaragun has a circular decoration by line engraving, which is rare in the Pasema Plateau. The painted mural at the Taran Kuchapo with the presumably depict concentric circle in lead and black, but almost disappeared. The left figure shows the survey area on the GIS map. Lembak Tumuri are located on the slightly ele elevated area um, between the west ba western base of Mount Denpo and the hills to the north. Uh, today, around the site is plantation of durian and coffee. There are seven tombs here. Uh, only number one, two, three, and number seven have a simple hut built on top of them to protect from rain and wind. Currently, these tumuli are managed as national historic sites. It shows the feature, features of Lembak tumuli. The burial uh, place is stone chamber built underground and no earthen mound on it. Uh, the largest stone is a seeding stone. 
The stone chamber is entered from the ground and has steps to the in to the entrance. The two chamber is square or rectangular in plan, with each side and the height measuring about 1.8 meters. All murals, are, all murals are painted inside the tomb chamber. Figure uh, one and figure two uh, depict something appears to be a human or animal. Figure three uh, is a spiral pattern like arabesque, and figure four is a bird-like beast face. Figure six is the best preserved mural and maybe dragon or makara. In this mural, five kinds of pigments can be seen. We use D-stretch image analysis, which is used in remote sensing as a method of restoring faded color murals. This is a program for visualizing patterns that are difficult to see with the naked eye by transforming the coordinate of the color space. As using this method, the original colors are lost, but the obscure image becomes dramatically clearer. For example, the photo on the right is a cave painting of marching people in Pufrabat, northeastern North Thailand. The face bumps on the arms and legs, and the shape of the fingers, which are difficult to identify in the, in the original, can get clearly recognition with the help of this right image analysis. Let's start to show the structure of tomb number one and its murals. The entrance to the stone chamber is square. On the left wall, uh, there is a face with round eyes. On the light stone is something with a black body and white arms. On the uh, light world, a black face seems to be facing something. <laughs> Let's get closer to the mural. It seems to have a large feather in black and white around the face. Uh, there is a figure of what looks like a head of a buffalo and underneath it, a human torso uh, painted in black. On the light wall, there is a face, uh, but he has a big ear, so it may not be a human. On the back wall, there is a geometric pattern that cannot be identified. Now, let's start the image analysis of the mural in Denmark number one. At first, the mural on the left side is uh, most characteristic as being conventionally thought to depict a bad right card. This stretches anal anal image analysis clearly showed the outline of its motif. The mural is painted with a motif outline at first and then painted in polychrome colors of between. This mural has documented by Bellwood when it was still clear and is recorded in his book Australasian Press History in Southeast Asia, published in 1995. Compared to his drawing, it is estimated that about half, about half of the lower part is now buried. Next, uh, the number tomb number two. This tomb has a square plan and higher height than uh, tomb number one. On the left wall, uh, the entire surface is stained black. There is a small stone walled room like facility. The light wall is also stained, making it, in, it impossible to see the patterns. The only part where the mural can be seen is a back wall. This is a back wall.
Uh, but the graphic is so bad uh, that we can see what is depicted. The mural of tomb number two was painted on a huge stone that makes up the black, uh, back wall. It seemed to depict a geometric pattern like polychrome bands, but the colors are faded and the graffiti is so bad that it is not clear what it depicts. When we use these stretch image analysis to reduce the visibility of the graffiti, we found the main motif of is a geometric pattern uh, with overlap bands. In the center of the image is a band overlap to each other, uh, creating a kind of perspective. Each band is bordered with a uh, bordered with a uh, red in center, white on both sides of it, and black uh, black outline. It used a technique that made up five lines and three colors per one band. Tube number three has also interesting murals. On the left wall, we can see a black human torso. On the entrance of a face facing left, on the right side, a pattern of human limbs. On the back wall, a spiral pattern like arabesques. Now let's look closer. On the left wall, there seems to be another line depicting some sort of object. The figure of the entrance seems to be grasping something. The light wall seems to have been painted with human limbs on light and a complex motif on the left. The back wall has a geometric pattern painted on the left side. The left wall of the tomb number three uh, consists of one huge stone. The, there appears to be an image of figure with black limb uh, but it is too faded to be seen clearly. So we use this stretch image analysis to investigate it. We found some figure around the kettle drum. Kettle drum. Uh, it has uh, determined this kettle drum belongs to the Hegel type 1. The echo wide, echo wise uh, at the top and bottom. Eco white at top and bottom. Uh, a snake like animal with a human face is also de depicted under the kettle drum. In addition to this mural, uh, there is another mural of human and kettle drum in this two. That is the stone, stone uh, that stands to the light side of the chamber doorway. Uh, the stone to the left has a stone ha uh, left has a geometric pattern that looks like a spiral. Spiral. To make the image clearer, in addition to use this rich image analysis, we use handheld scanners. Then we discovered the main uh, painted uh, the man painted black with his light hand around, uh, uh, around the neck of a white beast, uh, and his left hand grasping its ear. This white animal may be an uh, elephant because a uh, stone lady of a figure astride an elephant, the elephant stone, that is Batu Kaja, has been excavated in close to this Lembak Tumuri. We will be discussed later. On the back wall of tomb number three, there is a geometric pattern cons consisting mainly of spirals. There might be the design based on a plant motif like the alabaster pattern. It also looks like a bracken like plant that sprouts in spring. 
using district image analysis to stand out only the outline. We can see the perspective as the same as in the tomb number two, with the over overlapped bands in front and behind. In addition, one band is outlined with a thin line and then painted black and white in between. However, the painting is also character characterized by a very complex and abstract way, which is not considered to be a primitive. Tomb number seven has a square plan as similar to number two, but it, it is the largest in Lembak Tumuri. And the, the entrance is also wide with steps leading down. The left wall uh, it consists of two tiers of stone, but only the upper halves are mirrored. The stone's entrance is so faded. The light wall uh, was also has very few visible mirrors, and it might be no mirrors from the beginning. The back wall has a unshaped motif, unshaped motif. As entering the chamber, we can see the full image of the light uh, left wall. The left side of the motif of this motif is obscured. No trace of pigment can be seen on the stone at the entrance and the uh, uh, light wall. The back wall seems to be depicted something around the pan shaped motif, which may have been decorated with the geometric pattern. In Denmark Tumuri, the left wall of tomb number seven can be seen most clearly. Uh, the patterns here are painted in five colors, black, white, blue, yellow, and red, the highest number of colors used. The left side of the mural has faded, so it, it was hard to tell what it depicted. It was once thought to be depicted an uh, ostrich-like bird, ostrich -like bird with long neck. However, this stretch image analysis revealed an animal facing the left uh, with its mouth wide open and teeth bare. Uh, this could have been an imaginary beast facing the entrance like a makara, that is, my skull fish. For reference, there is an uh, elephant stone, that is, Batu Gaja, that was found near the Lembak Tumuri. The main motif is a main uh, man similar to, to be de depicted at the entrance of tomb number three. A slide an uh, elephant with grasping ears, uh, grasping ears and carrying, uh, uh, carrying a kettle drum, uh, a kettle drum of uh, Hega type one on his back. It is presumed to be a figure with the same meaning as the one in tomb number three. At this point, I would like to turn the presenter over to Dr. Triurjani. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kawano, for a nice uh, presentation. Now uh, it's my turn. Uh, about the PASEMA, the result of the analysis on the stone chamber painting at the Belik Batu Complex, Lembak City, Jarai District, Lahat Regency, then out of the seven stone chamber, only four have painted wall, namely tom number one, two, three, and seven. Each stone chamber consists of the four walls, and one wall of which is an entrance in the middle, and there is a painting on the side, but some are not. It is the, the map uh, situation, situation about the Kota Rayalembak. Uh, 
Devo can be more than five paintings in one stone chamber. Not to mention if the painting is located on two stone plates above and below with almost the same size as part of one side of the stone chamber wall. This colorful painting consists mostly of black, yellow, red, and white. The painting depicts the pick of animal or human figure uh, in an abstract form, and many of these paintings are mostly worn out, so it is difficult to know what images are on the wall. The, the result of taking picture, uh, pictures uh, sorry, uh, to treat scanners and laser also show the same thing, except that the images can be seen connected from all walls. Unfortunately, when the pictures were taken, the painting had already been damaged. The picture is included portrait, buffaloes, uh, with, uh, buffalo with horns as their identifiers, human figures with uh, bulging eyes, wearing jewelry bracelets and earrings, uh, some were wearing headgear like crown and some were bow and also carrying kettle drums. Picture of kettle drum are almost uh, in every stone uh, wall mural. Kettle drum described is headgear one type. Uh, which has a similar uh, between the plane of the top on the foot. Uh, according to the analysis, semantic analysis, the notation and connotation analysis has proven that the picture is a depiction of the spirit for scared figures, leaders who were buried in stone chamber. One of the terms is also based on previous research. Previous research reports that there is great Provision in the form of metal bracelet and necklace. The picture of cut drums. This is the the picture of cut uh, drum with the and uh, in the rock hills in the Teguangi, and then uh, with the image. This is the uh, image also with the, uh, from Kota Raya Lembak, but also they are in a uh, museum Balapota Dewa in Palembang. And this is an air, uh, uh, from Ipoar sites, yeah. Uh, documentation by uh, Bernard Campers, but uh, and the stone, the the artifact is still uh, on there in Ipoar sites. The interesting things is the picture of a catadon painted on the stone tomb has similarities with the one carved on the tomb wall at the Ipoar site. Lahat and relief of human figures carrying catadon on Slayer Hill from Tebuwangi village. Based on this Catalan picture, one of gave a relative date to this town, which is the same as Dangsan culture, which showed that the culture was accepted to arrive in Pasema, brought by Austronesian speakers uh, in <coughs> uh, plus minus uh, 500 BC in the early center uh, BC. Migration of Austronesia. To analyze this, it is, necessary to, it is necessary to look at the migration process of Austronesian speakers into the Sumatra region, especially to Pasema. Why is that? Megalithic culture elements are those brought by Austronesian speakers. This megalithic culture grows when people communities have lived in a certain area for quite a long time. The development from wandering to sedentary life certainly requires a high level of skill and adaptation process. Astonation is known as the realm of development of genetic culture, known as the making of pickaxes and pottery characterized by red slips and court mic for certain region. Uh, this is the information uh, by uh, Semanjuta, Theron, and Bellwood also. In, <coughs> in Pasema, community culture drum as a sacred percussion made of the metal were not made of broad, especially from the place, etc especially from the place of origin, but only painted or carved of stone media. Catadon artifacts themselves have been found in the megalithic culture area in Pasema. The existence of scratch of stroke of catadon on the stone chamber walls is very in interesting to be examined. Uh, migration uh, of uh, Austronesia. This is the metal age. The finding of the Riman skeleton of the Australomanesid and Mongol race is grave in Gua Harimau. And during the Neolithic era, 
Negality culture developed which also and developed job in accordance with uh, ills such as blacksmith, metal, pottery makers. The theory uh, out of Taiwan migration state The theory of Taiwan migration state the Asian speakers migrated from Taiwan to Sulawesi, uh, Indonesia, through the Philippines in the period of 6,000 uh, to 1,000 BC. During this time, the developing Asian culture was prehistoric Asian culture. In uh, 4,000 uh, 4, BC in Sumatra, they were already resident of the Australian race, who inhabited caves in Sumatra such as Gua Harimau. Gua Harimau Site, Padang Bindu Village, Semidang Aji District, Oku Regency, South Sumatra. This shows that Neolithic life at that time has used the media of cave or uh, niche as a place to live. Evidence of early statement before Australian speakers arrived in Sumatra is on the site of uh, Gua Harimau. Uh, diffusion and Innovation Meanwhile, uh, in the Pasemah Plateau, at the foot of Mount Dimpo, there is Megalithic the culture spread with its distinctive statue. There are in contact with stone chambers, dolmen, stone mortar, tetalit, etc. The existence of painting and relief of culture dam in stone chambers, Megalithic culture, and rock hill show that there has been a long time of adaptation on innovation. The scattering of culture dam object center on dome stones show that this culture appeared more recently at the beginning of the century whose spread has started uh, 500 to 300 century BC. But, uh, Van Hoek and I also follow the hit. And Catadam is a uh, holy and scrap bronze object uh, was also brought up by uh, Bernard Kempera. Similarly, Caterdam found in eastern part of Indonesia are also considered holy and separate objects. Yeah? Uh, local characteristic. In relation with the classification of the uh, Austronesia influence, uh, Basiman Junta, which classifies the arrival period of Austronesian speakers. Uh, then the Pasemah Degaltic period is the Austronesian proto-history period. This is, because, uh, this is because the shape of the culture is more complex and there are many variations of its finding, such as the characteristic depiction of human figure with large balding eyes, wide forehead, short and large nose, uh, large and strong jaws that lip and slightly uh, close mouth or uh, white uh, ears, hand and feet and wears jewelry such as a ring, uh, necklace, uh, bracelet, ankles, belt and uh, headgears. Uh, interpretation. Uh, however, uh, Catedum artifacts are not are not and many not be found in Pasema, only the scratch on the stone media. This proves that they are have adapted for a long time in South Sumatra and when Austronesian speakers can bring in down some type of metal object. In addition to the smooth mixing, there has also been development and innovation of the Catedum object. We then no longer map them, but painted them in a holy place. The material used is ochre and other kind of stone, uh, like a watch was uh, processed by a crossing ponding resulting in black, or white, ripe, or yellow powder. The research also proved the existence of ochre in the excavation box. Some other possibilities are their unavailability of sufficient material resource to make metal objects such as cat drum so that they can be represented in painting and sculpture in stone chambers. Thus, the process of cultural mixing and innovation has occurred in Pasema culture during Brown and uh, the Iron Age, which is performed by the depiction of Catadon artifacts that were originally made of metal. Uh, this is because the, the shape of the culture is small and there are many variations of its findings. To be more accurate about the absolute chronology on the spread of this culture, it is uh, necessary to do research focus on dating, uh, and of course, it really depends on the context of the exciting, uh, exciting findings. This is because the shape of the culture is more complex, and there are many variations of its finding. 
to be more accurate about the absolute chronology of the spread of this culture, it is still necessary to do research focus on dating. And of, and of course, it really depends on the context of the exciting finding. Uh, <coughs> in relation with the classification of the Austronesian infants by Siman Yutak, which classify the Erifa parrot Austronesian speakers, then the Pasemah Begal parrot is, is the Austronesian uh, proto-history uh, period. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, I uh, be back to uh, Dr. Kawano. Thank you. Based on the result of research in Indonesia, we found the decorative tombs of the world can be grouped into four traditions. The decorated tomb distributed around the world are diverse in terms of time and space, including Eurasia, Africa, and America. Uh, however, if we focus on the loops of de depiction, the subject, the ex expression of hierarchical differences, we can group them into four traditions. These are Egyptian, Chinese, and Mayan, and diffusion via C uh, tradition. Furthermore, these can be divided into those based on the center periphery relationships and those based on stimulus diffusion. Egypt is the oldest civilization where tools with figurative painted murals are appeared. Um, the tradition of the decorated tomb was passed on to Nubia. Uh, to the south and then spread to Etruria, Greece, and Macedonia, where a unique culture of decorative, decorated tombs was developed. Decorated tombs in China might date back to the Shan Dynasty, but they were most popularly constructed after the West Han Dynasty. This tradition of decorated tombs spread to the Shida and Mongol regions but it took root, especially in Koguryo, creating a unique culture of decorative, decorated tombs. Uh, it differs from the Egyptian tradition in the way the figures are depicted. Mesoamerica is also one of the areas where uh, decorated tombs were appeared and developed independently. In Tikal, which was one of the core cities of, of, of the Maya, and in Leo Asu, which was the satellite city of the Tikal, decorated tombs mainly using pictographs. Pictographs uh, were developed. Later, a unique culture of decorated tombs was diffused to the Oaxaca region, away from Yucatan Peninsula. The first tradition of decorated tomb is the sporadic appearance of the uh, decorated tombs rather than a center periphery relationship. These are scattered along the Mediterranean Sea, the East China Sea, and other seaside areas named the tradition of the diffusion via sea. Tunisia, Cyprus, Indonesia, and Kyushu in Japan or into this category. Finally, here is the conclusion of our presentation. There are four main points to this presentation. The first is the mural of the Lembak Tumuri depict not only the geometric pattern, but also figurative pattern of humans, animals, and so on. It may be uh, supposed that these represent the idea of the afterlife of the ancient people of the Pasema region. Second, the Ketrodome of Hega Type 1 found in the murals in particular may suggest that Australian people move, moved with the Donson culture. Third, the, the decorate, decorated tomb at Pasema are uh, thought to have uh, developed independently, influenced by foreign ancestral identities. Although megalithic culture is widely de developed in Indonesia, the areas where decorated tombs appear are uh, limited. 
It is likely that they were uniquely established by the spread of stimulus diffusion via C. Finally, uh, the decorative tomb of the world can be grouped into four traditions. Uh, there are two types of background for these diffusions. Those that spread by center periphery relationships and those that spread to remote areas through stimulus diffusion. Here are the archaeological books and papers that we used as reference for our presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>